general aptitude questions from gauge 2017. These questions are common to all branches. They are sample official questions for gauge 2017. Gauge 2017 is a competitive examination taken by millions of students for jobs in the government of India and for entry into higher level education institutions for postgraduate studies. These questions in general aptitude are for all branches for which the gate examination is conducted. There are two types of general aptitude questions, verbal ability, numerical ability. In verbal ability, English grammar, sentence completion, verbal analogies, word groups, instructions, critical reasoning and verbal deduction is tested. In numerical ability, numerical computation, numerical estimation, numerical reasoning and data interpretation are involved. Here are some sample questions in verbal ability, gate 2017 official pattern. Sample question 1, question 1. Choose the appropriate answer to complete the following sentence. To those of us who had always thought him timid, his dash came as a surprise. We fill in the blanks. Four choices are given A, B, C, D. They deal with some person, him, whom we thought was timid, and his reaction to something has come as a surprise. It is a multiple choice question. There are four choices. One choice is correct, three choices are wrong. It is ensured by the examiner. If you can guess and isolate the wrong choices, then what is left is the right choice. Let us consider choice B arbitrary. It is something which cannot be avoided. It says it was left to fate, to something fated to happen. It does not reflect its response to something. So this choice can be a wrong choice. This choice can be ruled out. Consider choice C. It is an inability, something he could not do. It does not reflect his response to something. So it cannot be a surprise. This, cannot, this choice can be ruled out. Choices B and C are ruled out. Consider choice D. It also does not reflect his response to something which cannot be a surprise. So this can be ruled out. Choices B, C and D can be ruled out because the response must come as a surprise. Here is unable, here he cannot avoid it, here he is still not reacting. So since we can rule out choices B, C and D, we have isolated all the wrong choices. What is left is the correct choice. A. The answer is A. He agrees with the official key. Sample problem 2, question 2. Choose the appropriate answer to complete the following sentence. Medicine is to illness as law is to what? There are four choices A, B, C and D. It is a multiple choice question. There are four choices. One choice alone is correct. Three choices are wrong. It is ensured by the examiner. If you can guess the right choice, the examiner ensures that the other three choices are wrong. Now, illness is something that is unwanted. None of us want it. To control illness, we need medicine. Now, anarchy is lawlessness, and a free for all takes place. The law of the jungle prevails. To control anarchy, we need law. So, in other words, medicine is to illness, as law is to anarchy. B is the right choice. We have isolated a two choice B. Only one choice can be correct. So we conclude that A, C, and D must be wrong answers. We don't even have to look at them. The answer is choice B. This agrees with the official key. Sample problem 3. Question 3. Read the following paragraph. The ordinary form of a mercury thermometer is used for temperatures ranging from minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. For measuring temperature below minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, thermometers filled with alcohol are used. These are, however, not satisfactory for use in high temperatures. When a mercury thermometer is used for temperature above 500 degrees Fahrenheit, the space above the mercury is filled with some inert gas usually nitrogen or carbon dioxide, placed the thermometer under pressure. As the mercury rises, 
the gas pressure is increased so that it is possible to use the thermometers for temperatures as high as 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, leaving off this paragraph, what is the question? It asks, what is it that besides mercury, a thermometer should be filled with if it is designed to be used for measuring temperatures above 500 degrees Fahrenheit? Four choices are given. Pyrometer, inert gas, iron and brass gas. The multiple choice question, there are four choices. One choice alone is correct, three choices are wrong. If you can guess the right choice, the examiner ensures other three must be wrong. Now we have determined that from what the thermometer should be filled with for temperatures around 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we say 500 degrees Fahrenheit means plus, 10, plus 500 minus 500. Above 500 and below 500. Round 500 we should take. So what it means is both above and below 500 should be taken. Here is 500, here is 500. Above and below. So the space above the mercury is filled with some inert gas. So we have above 500 and below 500. We should be filled with some inert gas. Above the mercury is the inert gas. So what happens is B is a correct choice. If B is a possible right choice, there is only one correct choice. So A, C and D must be wrong. D must be the answer. The answer is choice B. This agrees with the official key. Sample question 4. Question 4. The cost of manufacturing tractors in Korea is 20% less than the cost of manufacturing tractors in Germany. We do not know the factors. Even after transportation fees and import taxes are added, it is still cheaper to import tractors from Korea to Germany than to produce tractors in Germany. There are four assertions made. Which one is the best? A. The labor costs in Korea are 20% below those in Germany. B. Importing tractors into Germany will eliminate 20% of the manufacturing jobs in Germany. C. The cost of transporting a tractor from Korea to Germany is more than 20% of the cost of manufacturing the tractor in Korea. D. The import taxes on a tractor imported from Korea to Germany is less than 20% of the cost of manufacturing the tractor in Germany. The multiple choice question. There are four choices. One choice alone is correct. Three choices are wrong. If you can eliminate the wrong choices, and what is left is the right choice. This is ensured by the examiner. Now, let us look at the statement. The statement, let us look at statement A. It says labor costs in Korea are 20% below those in Germany. The statement does not say the entire statement. But it's easier to employ people in Korea than to employ people in Germany from the point of view of cost. So A is a false statement. It does not talk about being easier. It does not talk about it. A is a false choice. Let us look at choice B. It says in Germany 20% of the jobs will be eliminated. It does not say so. It does not say the tractors are the major employment area in Germany that the manufacturing cost can be dispensed with. So choice B is false. Now the statement does not say about the high transportation costs. It says transportation costs can be ignored. So C is a false statement. So A, B and C are false. A does not talk about labor costs of Korea and Germany. The state B did not talk about Germany having a major manufacturing uh, jobs in, in tractors. C does not talk about the cost of transportation. So this particular statement does not talk about A, B and C. If eliminate them, we have elimination. D must be the answer. You need not even read D, it must be the answer. The answer is D. It agrees with the official key. Now we come to sample questions on numerical ability. Here is sample problem 5, question 5. In a survey, 3 16th of the people surveyed told that they preferred to use public transport while commuting daily to office. 5 8th of the people surveyed told they preferred to use the old vehicles. The remaining 75 respondents said they had no clear preference. 
how many depots decided to use the public transport? There are four choices A, B, C, and D. It's a multiple choice question. There are four choices. One choice alone is correct, three choices are wrong. If you can guess the correct choice, examiner ensures other choices will be wrong. We will look at the problem once again. 3 sixteenths of the people want to use public transport. So 3 sixteenths they want to use public transport. 5 by 8 is 10 by 16. Of the people said they prefer to use their own vehicles. So 10 by 16 want to use their own vehicles. 10 plus 3 is 13 by 16. What is left is 3 by 16. They have not made up their minds. The remaining 75 they have not made up their minds. So 3 by 16 is given as 75. So 75 persons have not made up their minds. Now 3 by 16 is equal to 75 of the entire collection of persons. This also 3 by 16 this is the answer we want. How many want to use public transport? So 3 by 16 is the same as 75. But the answer is 75 persons. The answer is 75 persons. The answer is choice A. This agrees with the official key. End of the presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention.